Hey man, you ever look in the flat earth? All right, this footage here was taken by, uh, well, the same day that I did my Eaten by a Mirror video. Um, it was uh, February 17th, 2018. And what I wanted to do was a comparison of this video uh, because it showed uh, Fiddler's Point. And Fiddler's Point is approximately a mile away from me. Um, obviously, you cannot see much behind it, even though it's a low tide. And I had moved my camera up the bank um, to where I was at a higher perspective of course as you can see here um, and this was uh, like the last video one of the last videos I did when I was there um, so I wanted to see what I could see from a higher perspective even though I, I knew that I had all this mirroring um, but what you notice here is this illuminated sky um, and how this illumination um, actually blinds you from seeing anything further in the background Okay, further into the horizon, which, you know, right here where I've got my uh, virtual horizon set um, is not exactly where I think uh, the actual horizon is. I think it's actually a little bit above this. Um, but when you're using this virtual horizon, there's a little variance in there. Um, the best thing to do is put a level on it, which I have done in the past and showed that um, the actual horizon is much higher than what we perceive it as. Um, it's our perception of uh, space in front of us. Um, and I don't mean outer space, I mean our actual realm, our space, um, and how perspective works. Um, you know, a lot of people question a lot of things, and, you know, why can't we see uh, much further? Well, this video is going to show because uh, I matched it up with some other video um, that I took. Um, uh, almost well actually a month er, uh, earlier yeah because it was January 10th 2018 that I really got a lot of really good footage because uh, there was no mirroring and the thing was was uh, I was actually closer to the water when I started out and I'll show you this um, so you know please don't shut this off after a couple minutes of watching it um, I really think that uh, observational research plays a big role and when you can compare these and show how things change um, it's a big it is a big deal um, because this would have to be super super duper refraction working at this um, and right here um, I'm gonna show the time lapse that I was taking right there um, you know so I you see these boats going by and you don't see really much behind them you do see these rocks out because it is a very low tide now my comparison video is with a uh, higher tide um, where these rocks are kind of covered um, so you don't see the rocks I mean you might see a little bit uh, but I what I did was uh, I've sped a lot of this footage up um, right up to the point of where the Sun is um, departing our view and I've actually showed this footage before but I never showed all of the footage which once I started doing some comparison uh, you know comparing it really blew me away now this is when I got there on January 10th you see where I put my camera at I put my camera down low right at the edge of the water but it but it is up high I mean as far as uh, my uh, tripod is at its highest setting and so was it um, in that first part on February 17th. Now you see here where I've got my uh, actual leg in the water. I actually have to move it because it's making my um, tripod sink a little bit. And, you know, when, 
you got that little bit of water washing out that little bit of sand underneath that leg it does make a difference and here you can obviously see that the sun is behind the clouds but what you what you'll notice is that all the clouds are lit up also look at when I change the angle um, to my camera that's something too um, you know we allow more light into the camera which this illumination uh, really like uh, blinds you from seeing anything further in the few uh, in the horizon of course this is cell phone footage here now we're gonna get to the real footage um, now I sped most of this stuff up four times so I could get all this footage in without really uh, having you know a three-hour video <laughs> um, and also what you can do is take some of that footage from eaten by a mirror um, and compare it to some of this too um, I was going to just do a whole video just showing everything, but I decided not to because it would just be way too long of a video and people aren't going to watch it and learn from it. Um, right here I um, brightened up the, the screen a little bit and you can see as Fiddler's Point as I zoom in how far or how high up that water actually is. Um, and again, it's I, I'm not a concaver. I'm not saying that this is concave. I'm saying that because of perspective um, everything seems to get smaller and that's where you know a lot of people get confused as far as uh, you know perspective goes um, there's some good perspective videos out there that I suggest people look at and watch and really think about it because it, it's good information um, I, I Right offhand, I can't remember exactly um, who did some. Um, I think P Brain did some really great stuff. Now here, I slowed it down just so you could watch this boat go by. Um, obviously, you can see the boat clearly in the water. You can see it, uh, you know, its wake being pushed out. Um, and then I speed it back up here. I'm not going to go through a lot of putting on a lot of transitions. So uh, I hope this comes out all right in the video. Um, but you know, obviously see again how the clouds are lit up from underneath but the sun is still behind so what I'm saying is that water or that light is being reflected off the water beyond uh, where I'm at uh, due to perspective now remember that sun's uh, uh, quite a ways away but not 93 million miles because uh, I don't think we'd see what we see here on Earth, if uh, the sun was 93 million miles away, even though the globe people will deny this. And again, here's that halfway marker right there. Um, again, I wish I would have slowed some of this down a little bit slower, but that's that halfway marker. Obviously, you see water beyond it. And what you think is sky right here is not. It's actually water, but you can't resolve it because of the angular resolution that I'm at and the distance that I am actually being able to see. And obviously, you can see uh, where Fiddler's Point, I mean, it, it's, it's well above um, the top of those trees out there on Fiddler's Point. Actually, those are mangroves. Uh, but obviously, you can see that the water goes well beyond it and well above it. But again, this is due to perspective. Somewhere out there in that horizon, there is a convergence. And in the last part of this video, I will show that convergence point, uh, which is actually cool as hell um, because when I uh, posted this video I, I think all I did was I posted the the Sun part and I didn't post anything after now even here I go on the back side or I start looking on the back side of Fiddler's Point and looky there um, actually there's water beyond and above um, and what you see lit up is actually water that's reflecting the sun's light and sending it back up to those clouds that are in front of me. And again, a lot of people, um, you know, want to say that this is refraction, refraction, pulling everything up. Well, really, um, I, I don't see it as refraction pulling everything up. I see refraction causing compression, uh, mirroring. And if I could resolve that and there was a, not so much light on it, um, it would probably be just a... Um, a blur uh, out of focus because you I'm, I'm not going to be able to focus that far away and that's where you know things uh, uh what's the word for it i want to say uh, is distorted it, you know everything gets distorted in that at that point 
to where you can't resolve it just like on a day of heavy mirroring um, I can't zoom out uh, because I've got all that distortion so things get distorted not only within that light but within that area because of the distance um, it's the angular resolution we can only resolve things even the camera can only resolve things at a certain distance so again um, I'm here's uh, this video ends and I go to, into another video and again here you can see that the Sun's uh, uh, corpuscular rays are shining down and it's still behind the the cloud um, yeah the clouds obviously you can see that it's behind the clouds but look at the clouds lit up and I've even got my compensation exposure turned down on this um, so in turn um, yeah, you know you, you see these corpuscular rays now I'm gonna let a little of the natural audio go on here because I did have uh, I put a wide angle lens on and in one part here I had a polarizer but I took it off because it distorted everything now here shortly you'll hear the hear me uh, talk about the wide angle lens how it bends things but you know I, I uh, just videotaped the other night uh, one of the rocket launches out of Cape Canaveral from uh, the opposite side um, I'm on the west side and it of course launches from the east and they say oh look at there you can see the curvature of earth from it well how are they taking those pictures if they're using a wide angle lens which of course they would have to uh, especially at the time that they said that oh you know we can see the curvature of earth from space um, they could not have been as high as the ISS or actually I don't even think they were in space but when you look at the Felix Bumgartner and Neil deGrasse Tyson talking about how he couldn't be able to see the curvature of earth from that height um, sure makes you say hmm what's going on here Wide angle lens bends. We're going to use it. Maybe not. God, maybe I should have stayed where I was at. They don't seem to be following me over here. I'm going to take this off. <laughs> Okay, I sped this back up to four times its speed. Again, I'm trying to cut down on the video. Um, and obviously, you can tell right here that I did move my camera up the bank um, to a higher perspective. Um, because of these weeds in front of me, I know I've moved my camera. Um, the taller weeds sticking up right there in front of the camera. I know I have moved it. Um, and I do have a video to prove that I moved it with my cell phone. Um, but I'm I'm not as close to the water as I am um, or when I began when I first started um, but I'm in about the same spot when I had the low low tide um, and I moved my camera up for the very big uh, at the very beginning of the video I showed that time lapse um, I was much higher off the water than I am right now um, because of due to the low tide okay I'll put it to you that way I've taken uh, many, many videos, um, and, and I've always tried to be honest about how high my camera is off the water, and, you know, I started uh, filming it with my cell phone so I could prove the height of my camera. I'm taking measurements of it, setting at the highest setting, and again, you know, I, I don't try to lie to people, and there's nowhere where I can actually get up really, really high and... Uh, film this from my location there's nowhere to get except for up on that observation deck behind me but then again I'd have to you know zoom through palm trees and everything in order to you know see out there on the horizon um, which I, I I think I went up there one time in the past and you know it was obvious that I was up on that 
uh, observation deck behind me. Um, it's an aluminum observation deck. But here again, I zoom in and everything goes dark. I could lighten up the screen and show it, but obviously you can see that that light is shining off water, not off of uh, the horizon. I, I believe it's water because everything beyond here is nothing but water. Um, so I'm looking southward, um, not totally south, but kind of like southwest. Um, and again, this is early in the, the year. So, of course, I'm going to have the sun going more to the south. Um, now, here's where um, the sun starts uh, peeking through the clouds. Um, I catch it. Of course, I could have had probably a little better focus on this, but I think it was pretty good. Um, and again, look at that water. Um, you know, without the mirroring and the illumination of the sky, because normally, like I say, if you're out here and there's no clouds in the sky, everything is just illuminated on that horizon and you don't get nothing and of course i zoom up there and show you that that sun even though it it is supposedly below these clouds okay um, and it's only below the clouds due to perspective it's still well above these clouds um and everybody or i've had some trolls say oh you got to use a solar filter you got to use the right solar filter blah 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 to see that the sun does get caught yes it's called convergence it is a convergence, and due to my perspective height, there is going to be a convergence, no matter what. It's like taking two strings and putting them together, or, you know, putting a certain gap in between them, and looking down it, and you'll see where it converges. And the more of a gap that you put between the two strings, the farther out you're going to see those lines go, but then they're going to eventually converge. It, it's always a convergence, and this is always being concealed. Um... Because I don't think that you can really, really get past this mirroring effect. Even if I had a better zoom camera. I mean, right now I'm using a P900. Even if I had the P1000, I'm still not going to get past that little line of the mirroring effect. The, the miraging effect occurs. And there's nothing you can do about it. Now, I just changed in... I just changed into another video and I didn't put a transition in there I, I'm not even going to um, but really here this is the the key point um, this part of the video um, I I'm gonna leave this all natural um, and not speed it up um, and I have my reasons for it uh, because you're gonna see some things right here Number one, you're going to see this little line of clouds that are way, way off in the distance that you would not see again if there was a, uh, a lot of mirroring uh, happening, um, or you, if you like, you say the word mirage. Mirage was derived from the word mirror, uh, the French word mirror. Um, so, film a little bit after you know, when we think about mirror image, mirror reflections, um, you know, they want to say it's refraction, but I say it's light reflection. Um, and light does bend upwards. Um, as you can obviously see, these clouds are being lit up from the reflected light coming off the water back into the sky. And that's why a lot of times after a sunset, if you look behind you, or uh, a sun departure, put it to you that way, um, if you look behind you, you still see the sky, the opposite horizon, still lit up. Uh, from the light of the sun and also you kind of see it does does this little flashing um, and I my opinion is is that as the sun is going further away it is slowly being magnified little by little and each one of these little flashes you'll see um, is usually a sign that it is getting enlarged um, light will be enlarged with water slowly getting more and more in front of it um, and you can't deny that um, so I think really right here we're seeing the light getting uh, from the Sun getting enlarged due to its magnification going through so much of the Earth's uh, atmosphere plane um, you know I, I want to always say atmosphere um, but you know I, I don't believe it's a sphere also look at where that Sun is actually flattening out it's getting compressed and compression happens over mirroring water uh, things get 
compressed and flattened out at the bottom. Um, and obviously, you can see right here that the sun is really doesn't appear to be going below uh, the actual horizon. It just seems to be kind of uh, sitting there. And if you look at the edges on the left and right side of the sun, you kind of see that it's going to a point um, well above. Now, is the sun a reflection of a light? Is it a projection of a light? It very well could be. And there's that little flash again. Um, you see this. Doo -doo. Um, and in a time lapse, you even see it more. I have some time lapses that you can obviously see this, uh, this flashing going on. And, you know, that flashing to me, um, again, this is my opinion. I don't expect anybody to believe a word I say either. Um, but I, I want to say that that's where it's getting magnified. And then you also see it getting uh, compressed and magnified. Um, and there it is again, a little more uh, flashing. Um, it kind of looks like it strobes a little bit. Um, and this is really due to paying a lot of attention to my videos um, and the more I review them because um, that's what I've been doing I've been going back and reviewing my footage so I can figure out which months were giving me the best visibility and visibility is the key when you got a day of good visibility um, it, it is so wild it, I mean you, you just cannot um, fathom uh, what you will see uh, because it all has to do with you know, angular resolution. Now, look at it. It almost looks like an eyeball, but look at where it's a football. Look at where the points are. That is the convergence um, of any source, the light source and everything. Um, I, I have a hard time uh, sometimes explaining things, but this illuminating sky, uh, when you have this filtered light, um, it, it allows you to see much better. Okay, and that's what I look at. Um, there's probably a lot of uh, um, evaporated water that's out in front of me, and it's causing this uh, filtering of the light, so I'm not getting a blunt, whole, uh, illuminated sky. Plus two, I feel like the sun is much further away in the winter time. Um, <laughs> But I, I think it's spiraling around a flat plane and not going around a ball like science has taught us or told us to believe. Um, you know, we will never get to go into outer space and look back and say, wow, you know, look, Earth is a spinning ball. But look at this uh, sun, man. It seems to take forever, forever. But here's where I think you're actually going to see the actual size of the sun is right um, at the point where it's it's actually getting smaller is what it's doing. But the light is being compressed, flared out from left to right, and you're not seeing but a portion of that uh, compression um, due to the way the horizon is. Okay, um, and it's kind of hard to explain in, in a sense, but right here is where you're going to see it uh, draw in and this is uh this is actually the sun right here um and it's small and it fades away way out there in the horizon and this is one reason why i didn't zoom in on this one because i could get fiddler's point and that water well beyond um within the camera okay i could resolve it better at a um, further range than zooming way in on it um, and again you know you still see these clouds lit up and again um, it's not due to um, the Sun being underneath the clouds going over the curve it's due to the fact that that light is still reflecting off the water somewhere out there and lighting up the bottom edges so this is a light reflection not light direct light shining right underneath these clouds um and that's something too when they show you a mountain you know with the with its uh, shadow being appearing to be casted up it's actually not being casted up it's being casted parallel but 
because of uh, perspective, you're going to get this perspective view that it's going upward and it's really not. Um, and you can do little experiments uh, with a light reflecting off of a mirror to show this. If you, you know, if you really want to spend some time doing that, you can. But still look at uh, the distance back there uh, where you can still see um, that. Okay, guys. After uh, the clouds lit up. Ends. Um, and again, it's not lit up from uh, the bottom. It's being lit up from the reflected light. Um, many people were are, are going to say, "Oh, you know, uh, think about if I if I had another guy out there and he was level with me, um, horizontal plane, and he had a camera out there zooming out. Uh, you would you would just see him zoom out and the clouds rise up, water drops, and you know everything opens back up." Just like zooming out here, everything opens up to where I can see clouds well beyond. Now, you think about how far those clouds are out there. They're out there way, way out there. They could be 60, 100 miles, maybe even more away. Um, and again, here I kind of shoot across these clouds to show you that now um, they're really not so much lit up because there's probably clouds that are out in front of it that are blocking that light from hitting these okay uh, because it's it's parallel it's not rounded it's not a ball and of course uh, you know I know I'm gonna have people Globers tell me that this is all refraction but you know my thing is is how is this reflect refraction? I mean, it would have to be the super duper refraction of the history, or uh, well, history of Earth, you know, to have this super duper refraction of that nature to pull all that water that high up above Fiddler's Point and reveal the whole horizon to me. This is revealing truth beyond a shadow of a doubt that no matter where your height of your camera is, visibility plays a big role. And how far we can see the height of your camera um, also plays a big role because you can only resolve something on an angular resolution to uh, to a certain point um, then after that you're skimming the surface of it um, if you was to take you know golf balls and lay them all in a row and you know then uh, look at it from an angle view you would see all of those golf balls getting smaller 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 as it gets away from you and then when you uh, line up to the first one and say you're level with it all the other golf balls will vanish behind it uh, and you're only going to be able to resolve the first edge of the first golf ball or maybe you know you might be able to get one or two behind it but again that's uh, due to perspective everything gets smaller um, and also it depends on where your height is of your camera to resolve anything beyond it um, if you got your camera a little higher you might be able to get you know a couple of the golf balls um, but then after that everything's going to shrink and hide behind the other one um, and that's what I say about these boats that are well out there in the distance in some of my videos people say well you can see the bottom of the boat getting cut off but really, um, how about the waves blocking it out due to my angle to the water that those waves are literally getting uh, blocking out the bottom hole of the boat because that can only resolve the closest resolvable wave. Okay, after that, um, like in some of my videos, you'll see the wake of the boat and then, you know, because I'm down low, that wake itself is going to block out okay, the lower hull of the here. boat. Again, I could go on forever. I could show these videos forever, and I know I'm going to have Globers to tell me bullshit. Why? Because they do not understand perspective in the way that I do after doing, you know, thousands of observations and knowing how this mirroring effect works, the illuminated sky, angular resolution, and resolving the edges of, uh, you know, distant objects. Um, this always plays a role. And how we see but the biggest thing is is visibility once you have great visibility um, and this was one day that I, I actually wish I would have had uh, somebody else there working another camera 
and zooming around and catching some of the other uh, boats that were floating around out there because I know I would have got some really, really good footage. Probably would have seen uh, Cutter's Rock and, uh, you know, maybe because I have found Cutter's Rock, believe it or not, in some of my footage. And that, that'll be, uh, I'll review that in the future here in some future videos. All right, thanks for watching, folks.